Hi everybody, Jennifer Schaus here coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. And thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Today uh, we are covering Sikorsky Aircraft and this is part of the top 40 profiles of the top 40 government contractors. Uh, today's session is recorded and it's complimentary. You can find all of our recordings on our YouTube channel. If you're looking for the PowerPoint, you can find it later today on the slideshare.net site. Both are complimentary and SlideShare, you can log in using your LinkedIn credentials. If you sign up to follow our YouTube channel, you'll be alerted of any new webinars that we post um, that are either part of the series or other uh, webinars that we're conducting. Just a quick blurb about us. We are based in downtown DC and work with uh, revenue generating federal government contractors. Uh, we primarily focus on GSA schedules and some other services listed here. Uh, we've also got events, obviously webinars and conferences that we put on throughout the year. Uh, so hop over to our website and click on the about us to learn a little bit more. As mentioned, um, we do uh, have over 600 complimentary government contracting webinars or videos on the YouTube channel. I think we now actually have over 6,000 subscribers, so we'll have to update this slide. Uh, our newsletter now reaches over 26,000 subscribers, and LinkedIn, we've got quite a few as well. So if you were trying to sell to the federal contractors, we've got a media kit that we can send you. Uh, just shoot us an email to the hello at jenniferschaus.com, and we will send out pricing information on that. A couple notes here of um, some specialty webinars that we're conducting. Uh, there are there's a two-part GSA schedule uh, basics webinar that we're working on with our friends over at the Department of Veteran Affairs. It's going to be August 17th and August 24th. I believe those are Thursdays. Uh, there's no fee to attend, uh, so you can click on those links to register. And again. Um, you can get the slides later today on slideshare.net because this is uh, quite a lengthy link. You can also find it on our website under the events section. Even though these are virtual, uh, the links for both of these classes, again, are on our website. So jenniferschaus.com. Just navigate over to the event section. Uh, later in August on the 29th, which is a Tuesday, uh, we're working with the SBA to talk about subcontracting opportunities at the VA. Um, that will be 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to double check. It might be 12 p.m., but um, we will uh, update that if that link or if that time is perhaps incorrect. Uh, the link, again, you can get to through our website or through the slides later today. Uh, additional classes, some of these are uh, a little bit into the future. February of 2024 is a marketing class for government contractors. Uh, and then um, Thursday, August 23rd uh, is another um, class. It's the same exact class, uh, so coming up next month. Uh, and then in September, another class on GSA schedules. So you've got plenty of options here for learning about GSA schedules, marketing, and subcontracting opportunities at the VA. Uh, all of these webinars are complimentary. Some of them are our own. Others are obviously with uh, partner organizations. Coming up in uh, less than a week, we're going to be there at the Kennedy Center in the top right-hand uh, corner of the picture of the Kennedy Center in the uh, cafe, which is on the terrace level from 5.30 to 7.30. It's two hours of networking. The perimeter of the room is going to have these companies that you see here, including uh, eight federal government agencies, the Air Force um, for DOD, the Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency, um, Army National Guard, the IRS, SBA, the VA, Department of Ed and Homeland Security. We've got some great sponsors. You can see their logos there on the right-hand side. We still have a couple tickets left. We're almost at 300 people. So if that is of interest, again, navigate over to our website, click on the event tab, scroll down to July 17th, and you can click to purchase the ticket. Uh, if anyone's looking to get on to the GSA Oasis Plus contract vehicle, uh, send us an email and we will assist you with that. We've got various um, proposal support packages uh, that are available to uh, small businesses. And okay, so now we want to thank our sponsors who help make this webinar series uh, possible. Otherwise, we would be charging for these webinars. So our sponsors 
um, we certainly want to thank them for uh, their participation. So uh, let's just kick this off here. We'd like to thank our friends at GovEvents. They're the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on GovEvents.com, as well as recordings from our past five, 600 webinars. We also want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They're the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. You can visit setasidealert.com for more information. Lastly, the Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. Uh, the Virginia PTAC uh, over at George Mason University, uh, which is now an Apex Accelerator, offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to establish government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location, and one-on-one -on -one counseling is, however, limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. Uh, during the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce monthly government contracting council meeting to network with peers and learn about upcoming events and opportunities and help shape future programming. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of every month at 8.30 a.m at their offices. The next event will be on Tuesday, July 25th. If you've got questions or want to register or participate um, via Zoom, please email Alicia Field. Her email is there at the bottom of the screen, Alicia F at Reston, restonchamber.org. Uh, Federal Business Council. Events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with the government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and offsite meetings. FBC will, I'm sorry, FBC provides full lifecycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Uh, Bidspeed. Uh, do you want help winning government contracts? Bidspeed helps and you win. You can find opportunities at federal, state, and local levels. Uh, Bidspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and also provide you with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. Bidspeed is an official partner of the U.S. SBA's 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at bidspeed.com. Uh, again, GovFend and FedMine, they are the uh, source behind our data in this webinar series in 2023, and they've also provided data for us in the past uh, webinars over the last several years. So again, thanks to GovSpend and FedMine uh, for participating in this series. Uh, NCMA, the National Contract Management Association, is having their annual World Congress event. This is July 23rd to 26th in the very fun city of Nashville, Tennessee. I highly encourage you to attend the event. The link to register is there at the bottom of your screen. Um, they've got some great training sessions. Uh, anyone involved in contracting, it's great for networking, uh, but you're also going to come away with some valuable information as well as some CPE credits. So again, register today on the link and there will be point of contact information uh, on that registration link should you have any questions that aren't addressed on their website. Okay, a little bit about the series. Again, uh, all of our webinars are recorded. They're complimentary. You can find them again on our YouTube channel. Uh, there's plenty of webinars there on um, subcontracting and, and just government contracting in general. Uh, today's PowerPoint will be available later today on slideshare.net. Here's a list of what we've covered so far. So we're a little bit more than halfway through the season. Uh, if you wanted to register for any of these um, webinars that are coming up, you just navigate over to our website to the section called Top 40. Um, all of these here in red, again, have been completed. So the uh, recordings are on our website under that same section. Today we're covering Sikorsky. Uh, we will then um, 
continue every Wednesday, uh, concluding on Wednesday, November 15th with Glaxo Smith Klein. Okay, um, we're assuming that most people are attending this series because the businesses that we're profiling in are the large businesses that are uh, doing the most amount of, um, have the most amount of revenue, the most amount of contracts with the U.S. federal government. Uh, and because of that, um, because they are considered large businesses, they are then required to parse out a certain percent of their contracts to small businesses. So, uh, if you're here for that purpose, as far as subcontracting, you should be cognizant of both the FAR and the DFARS, the federal acquisition regulations, and then the uh, defense federal acquisition regulations. Um, these are the rule book for how the government um, should be awarding contracts. So uh, as far as the FAR, you've got some policies and procedures that you should be aware of. Uh, we covered the FAR back in 2022. You've got the link there to the uh, YouTube recording on the FAR. Uh, the same thing here for the DFARS, um, and this is probably going to be relevant for today's presentation because Sikorsky Aircraft is primarily selling to defense uh, agencies, um, so you should be aware of the DFARS, and uh, again, you can use that link to get to uh, that past recording. Okay, some other complimentary webinars that we did uh, on just basic uh, subcontracting. We actually kicked off this series back in February with a, an overview on subcontracting with the primes. It has six uh, sessions there, starting from market research all the way through to compliance and the reporting that comes along with subcontracting and the flow down clauses from the FAR. Um, we've covered subcontracting opportunities within all 15 of the federal departments. We did that in 2021. Uh, there's a whole list of, um, of those webinars there on our website. That link uh, that you see there in the center of your screen will get you to those webinars. And then over the last, uh, I don't know, 10 plus years, we've covered more of the tactical and strategic topics on subcontracting where you've got over 30 webinars um, on that that topic and the link there at the bottom of the screen will get you to those webinars. Best practices, just to keep in mind uh, in general, so not just for Sikorsky, but uh, for any uh, large prime that you're pursuing, uh, you definitely want to understand uh, and communicate what it is that your company does and does well. So what is your value proposition? What are you bringing to the table? What is attractive about your company? What is your core competency? Um, that is on offer to these companies. Uh, you shouldn't be knocking on their door asking what they can do for you. You should be bringing them an opportunity. And whether it's a superior skill set, a lower price, um, something that's relevant in your past performance, um, this is really uh, what you should be focused on. Um, and that will then drive you to the opportunities where you are, in fact, adding value. So when you see the RFPs, the requests for proposals, the requests for information, the requests for quotes, um, where maybe you can do 80% of the work and 20% is missing because you're missing a, a technical capability. That's perhaps when you can uh, take these opportunities to the large businesses and um, attempt to work with them. There's so much public data and free data that's available. So use the websites that are out there, not only the government websites that are listed there and at the bottom of your screen, the SAM.gov, USA Spending, FPDS, um, but there's obviously plenty of paid data aggregators, excuse me, who, uh, who pull all of this information together in an easier to use platform. So keep that in mind and, um, and do as much homework on these companies before you decide to reach out to them. Um, speaking of that, you certainly want to use Google for both alerts to stay abreast of any changes that are happening at the company, um, as well as any just news articles that may be relevant to government contracting, the companies that you're pursuing, the departments, the agencies. Um, so stay on top of that. Um, and then once you have have done your homework and you've got that information, you want to customize your capability statement, and that should be focused uh, on the actual opportunity that you're pursuing as well as the company that you're courting. Um, so these large businesses, your capability statement should speak to them, to your past performance as well as theirs, and have something on it that ties that all together um, that is, again, focused on the specific RFP, the solicitation. 
Once you've done that, uh, hop over to their website and register as a small business vendor. Most of these companies will uh, make it easy to find that small business registration uh, button and make sure that you complete that as, um, as much as possible. So don't leave any of the data fields blank. Um, if you have an opportunity to upload a capability statement, don't upload your bland one. Again, make it customized. Uh, sign up for their newsletter. Look at the events that they're attending. Are they going to different conferences? If so, then go there as well and shake the hands. That's how this, that's how this happens. It's how relationships happen. It's how business happens. It's how contracts happen. Um, you then can connect with the um, small business liaison officers, the SBLOs on LinkedIn with a custom message. Simply never, never, never uh, connect with anyone, whether it's an SBLO or, um, or whomever on LinkedIn without sending a message. It just uh, makes the connection a little bit more valuable, shows them that you've done your homework um, and that you're having a reason to connect uh, quality over quantity. Uh, the program managers for the company are going to be more of the decision makers that are overseeing the actual programs, but the SBLOs can help you get to them as long as you present the SBLO with the opportunity, the solicitation number, et cetera, that you're pursuing. Okay, and those are, again, just uh, general best practices, whether it's Sikorsky or ABC company or whomever it is that your company is um, pursuing. So again, today we're covering Sikorsky. They are um, a Lockheed Martin uh, company. So they were purchased by Lockheed uh, several years ago. And we're just gonna go through the basics here. There's the company website um, that takes you to uh, the Sikorsky uh, piece of what they do. Uh, for any of the publicly traded companies, we always include their stock price. And I just find it interesting to, uh, to take a look at this and see how they were impacted or not by COVID. Um, some companies didn't skip a beat. Some made out very, very well, as we as we well know, and uh, other companies did not uh, survive the uh, pandemic. So uh, as we look here, it looks like they, um, you know, may have uh, dropped a little bit in their stock price over the last um, five years, but it looks like they are uh, well on their way to uh, to rebounding at um, almost uh, record numbers. Um, so trading at 460 um, is certainly not a bad thing. And I believe the market is up today. So um, again, you don't need to be a, a broker or have your, uh, your trading license. Just be cognizant of where they are, particularly um, where they are and then how they compare with other competitors, uh, even on these um, trading prices. So just to have some additional discussion points that perhaps your competition does not, this will set you apart from the others. This is the link, as we mentioned, to their um, small business um, uh, registration. So again, make sure that you're not just registering on there because nobody is going to contact you simply because you're in a database. Um, they may send you a newsletter because you're in a database, but are they gonna contact you um, because you're listed in there, you're an 8A company, you're woman-owned, or you're veteran-owned. No, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of companies with those checkboxes as well. So you actually need to have something of value that your company does uh, in order to facilitate some sort of starting relationship. Uh, this is the information from SAM.gov, which is the database where all federal government contractors must register. Um, and so here is their UEI number, and this is the UEI number that we are focused on for today uh, for Sikorsky. So we're not using the Lockheed information, we're using Sikorsky. Okay, uh, here's a, a link to their uh, website, uh, I'm sorry, their page on LinkedIn. Um, and again, this is showing um, Sikorsky again, but obviously part of uh, Lockheed. Uh, their president is Paul uh, Lemo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it looks like he's well-educated and has really been with Sikorsky or Lockheed actually for uh, quite some time. So it seems like he was a natural fit. He's been at the helm since January, 2021. Again, you should know this name, you should know perhaps a little bit about this person uh, simply for discussion points with um, just building relationships that sh to show that you have done your homework. Here's some SBLOs, uh, Martha and uh, Lavinia. Um, 
and uh, would highly encourage you to connect with them once you have done your homework. Don't just simply send them an email and ask them what they can do for you. Um, what you want to do is give them, hey, I want to speak to Joe Smith, the program manager of your, you know, uh, aeronautical parts division. There's an RFP for, I don't know, the Navy, the Air Force, whoever it is. Uh, here's the solicitation number, and you know we have the uh, the parts, we have the whatever it is, uh, whatever piece of the puzzle that you're bringing to the table, uh, you should be communicating to these SBLOs. They're just going to uh, more or less be gatekeepers and kind of vet vet you to make sure that uh, your company is in fact who you say you are and that you're legitimate. So again, show that you've done your homework and that you are bringing something to the table. Uh, it's not their job to find opportunities for you. Um, you certainly have to go out and hunt them down and then contact Martha Lavinia or any of their other SBLOs to then help them more or less, we'll say, present you to the, the right people within the company. Uh, but keep in mind that thousands of companies are probably sending them emails every day. So again, this is why a lot of this additional homework, knowing the stock, knowing the CEO, some other tidbits uh, can certainly work in your favor. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the prime contracts that Sikorsky holds with the civilian uh, departments. And um, the slides are a little bit uh, off as far as just um, cosmetically uh, the alignment of the, um, the years, but um, just bear with us here as we, um, this is kind of how they, they came into us. But um, so what we're looking at here is uh, for the Justice Department, FBI, which falls under justice. Um, is doing the uh, the bulk of the business there. Um, nothing on the radar until 2021, um, and then a huge increase in fiscal year 2022. 2023 still remains to be seen, but I can't imagine that uh, in this current fiscal year that um, the FBI or Justice is going to do uh, numbers that are going to be equal to or better than uh, the last fiscal year. Uh, but keep in mind what Sikorsky is selling are these, you know, um, multi-million or multi-billion uh, dollar um, deals for the aircraft that they are manufacturing. So it's usually going to be large purchases that happen probably, you know, once or twice every couple of years. The following years could be for um, training or additional spare parts or maintenance or something along those lines. So um, a lot of peaks and valleys, but that's just the business model when you're selling um, product that is uh, that has this big price tag on it. Um, Coast Guard falls under Homeland Security in times of non-war. So if you look at their numbers, um, in 2021, uh, they saw a huge increase of the 275 million, I'm sorry, 271 million, uh, which was obviously a, a big uh, graduation from the uh, roughly 19 million from the past two fiscal years. They then dropped down to 37 million, but that's still better than what they did in 2020 and 2019. And 2023 has already exceeded uh, those numbers. Um, so uh, 2023 is looking good for the, uh, the Coast Guard again. Um, you'd have to go back and look at the details and the devil is, is certainly in the details here with uh, with these purchases. We're just giving you kind of the high level information. It's up to you then to take this and run with it and do the additional um, digging in the SAM.gov database or FPDS or USA spending wherever you're grabbing your data or any of the, the great data aggregators that are out there. If you look at the total, so the last row in gray, we're just looking at fiscal year 19 through 2023. Uh, we've got some interesting numbers here going from uh, roughly 19 million up again to the 275, um, down to 46, but then up now to almost 50 million. Uh, and these numbers were pulled, I think it was uh, middle of last week. Um, so just uh, uh, be cognizant of that. Again, these large purchases that, that kind of stick out because of the nature of what it is they're selling. Um, we'll see what happens for 2023, but obviously they're um, they're tracking better than they did in 22, and as well as 2020 and 2019. On the defense side, this is kind of where the action is. No surprise. Um, so uh, I think anybody that had signed up for this webinar probably has predicted uh, a lot of this information that we're seeing here. 
uh, if we look at the Navy, um, a lot of their numbers um, are interesting, especially since uh, we see that in fiscal year 19, uh, if you compare the Navy to the Army, the Navy is the, the clear shining star awarding uh, more than 2x of what the Army has uh, awarded to Sikorsky. Um, and then, you know, just below that is the Air Force and then some um, smaller purchases, smaller, obviously, 28 million um, through Department of Defense. And that breaks down in that second graph that you see there. So DCMA uh, doing the bulk of the business with kind of the DOD, um, main DOD. Um, special Ops and, uh, and DARPA obviously have some numbers on the board, but um, the real bulk of what's happening is uh, DCMA and then some looks like financial adjustments there, some negatives. So uh, again, devil is in the details. It would uh, behoove you to, to dig a little bit deeper. Um, DLA, Defense Logistics Agency, uh, as one can imagine, uh, has some decent numbers there too. Um, However, uh, some fluctuations. So we see that in, uh, this is just the, um, the last row above the sector totals. So uh, 2019 looks pretty good. Uh, they dip in 2020, perhaps because of COVID and 2021 is maybe some still, some fallout still from that. 2022, they start to recover. Uh, 2023 is uh, again, another dip, but um, keep in mind that defense uh, reporting is, three months behind civilians. So even though we pulled these numbers last week, it's going to be uh, three months prior to that. So um, June, May, so these numbers are really looking at April. So, um, or end of March uh, potentially. So this is really only half of the year. So it's possible that 2023 we'll see some recovery uh, again, just because we're only seeing a partial uh, look here. So uh, keep that in mind. If we go back up to the top, and sorry to kind of jump around here, but uh, obviously the Navy is um, the, the major uh, player here that's purchasing the Sikorsky aircraft when you compare them to the Army or the Air Force, um, and obviously some fluctuations, um, but overall uh, decent, and I would imagine that 2023 that once reporting catches up, so at the end of the fiscal year, which will be um, end of September, October, November, December, we'll then see the full picture for the DOD numbers for Sikorsky. Uh, if you look at the totals at the bottom, um, these are certainly higher numbers than what we saw on the civilian side. These are billions, um, but certainly some fluctuation and it's declining. Uh, so they go from 5.1 down to 4.3. They recover a little in 2021, uh, a dip then of about uh, a billion uh, 1.2 billion in 2022. Uh, but again, we'll see what happens here for, um, for 2023. They may be able to, um, to equal more or less what they're doing in 2022. But again, that's the business model. They sell these um, huge expensive aircraft. And so they're not going to be um, selling those um, repeatedly every year because they these aircraft do have a certain lifespan, so there's going to be, you know, just as you would not be purchasing a new car every year, the government's not purchasing new aircraft every year. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but it's as close as I can get today on a Wednesday. Um, what we see here on the independent uh, agency side, so NASA uh, had a, a decent purchase of 2.2 million. I'm not sure exactly what that was for. Again, you'd have to dig into the details and adjustment there in 2021, and then they're back on the board uh, in the black in 2022. Um, again, not sure exactly uh, what the, the purchase was, but uh, you'd have to, to dig in. So the next codes, uh, next codes again are North American Industry Classification System. These are codes that identify what a business does. So your next codes are listed in your SAM.gov profile um, and identify again what it is your business does. Um, again, no surprises here. They're obviously, Sikorsky is obviously in aircraft manufacturing and then they've got some uh, auxiliary equipment and manufacturing for just, you know, we'll call these spare parts. Uh, as you see in the graph here, as you go kind of left to right, that's the chronology. Uh, some fluctuations, 2020 was the dip there for aircraft manufacturing. Um, could have been related to COVID or just the, um, the business model, as I've mentioned uh, several times now. Uh, 2023, these numbers, oops, sorry. Um, sorry, 
accidentally got off that slide. Um, 2023 uh, remains to be seen just because a lot of these numbers are going to be pulling from DOD, which is where a bulk of the, um, the revenue comes from for them. Okay, uh, and these are the actual numbers from that um, the previous graph, and this takes us back actually to 2016, which I think is important just to um, for companies that are providing uh, product as they are. I think it is important to go back even further uh, and really just investigate um, what has been purchased, or just looking at some of the fluctuations in numbers. Um, and they even show up on the board here. Um, for books printing, and those are probably manuals for um, for the parts, for the, the aircraft, that sort of thing. So um, again, but it, it would certainly require further investigation. Okay, so some contracting, sub-Ks. Um, there's a, if you have a sub-K plan, you're then a large business. Again, that has to parse out a certain percent of your business to small businesses. Um, and those subcontracts are typically valued at they are valued at $750,000 or above. That's the threshold where uh, alarms should go off and say, okay, we need to um, parse out a certain percent to small businesses. So on the civilian side, it's gonna mirror what we saw on the earlier slide. So Homeland Security, that was where we saw the Coast Guard figures. Um, and those numbers obviously um, peak in a major way in 2021. Um, and then they dip back down to kind of levels where they were in uh, 2020 and 2019. Again, that was Coast Guard. So um, Coast Guard is probably buying some helicopters if you kind of put uh, two and two together and use some logic. Uh, but again, it would be worth it to uh, dig in a little bit deeper, but uh, I would bet a, a good amount of money. That's probably what the purchase was for. Okay, on the defense side, this is also going to mirror everything that we saw before. So Navy, obviously, um, Coming out with strong numbers here, meaning that uh, the Navy contracts are going to Navy and uh, Army and Air Force um, are having kind of the bulk of the business where the contracts need to be to have a sub K plan with them. Uh, the numbers are going are declining again, but keep in mind these are three months behind. Uh, if you look at the sector totals, um, we'll see what happens with 2023, but it looks like they're pretty close to um, uh, surpassing the subcontracting. Uh, dollars for from the previous fiscal year. Okay, on the independent side, uh, nothing here. That was the NASA um, piece that we looked at on the previous slide, so nothing reported. And now if we look at uh, the contracts awarded by agency, um, very uh, similar. Again, you should be able to, um, to guess kind of who was going to be at the top here, which obviously is Navy, Army, Air Force. DLA, which uh, posted some big numbers on those previous slides, uh, and then Homeland Security there at the bottom, which is um, looks like not a lot of money, um, but that's still uh, 19.83 million. Again, that's Coast Guard falling up under Homeland Security, and Navy at the top, I believe, yeah, so 680.7 um, million. Again, we want to thank our friends at FedMine, uh, which is now part of GovSpend, for providing us this data. If we look at the industries, again, this will mirror the uh, earlier slides So the aircraft manufacturing is what they do. Um, and this is just a, a good lesson for small businesses. If you um, hear the name Sikorsky, what do you think of? You think of aircraft and helicopters and airplanes and um, everything kind of related to that. And that's exactly uh, what you want the government to think of when they think of your business. This is, you know, ABC company is the best um, digital transformation company, or are they are the software suppliers of, you know, A, B, and C. So again, this is where just defining what your company does and your value proposition uh, comes into play. And again, just um, having your, your value proposition uh, be known by other companies, potential partners, potential uh, primes, as well as just uh, the government directly. Okay, uh, again, so aircraft manufacturing is what they do. Um, and then let's look at the subcontracts that have been awarded and the companies that are um, falling up as tier one subcontractors to Sikorsky. Um, it looks like they focus a lot um, on awarding um, the bulk of their subcontracts to a company called Spirit Aero Systems. And take a look at them in SAM because there's nothing that would stop you from being a subcontractor under Spirit. 
which would make you a tier two subcontractor to uh, Sikorsky. Uh, some other companies showing up here, uh, including Raytheon. So there's nothing that prevents businesses, large businesses from subcontracting some of their dollars to other large businesses. Uh, Raytheon, I think was the second um, contractor that we've uh, highlighted in this series. So the recording is on our website. I think there might actually be a slide that I think I added a link to that this morning. Um, these are the top five subcontracts reported. There's obviously plenty more than this. Um, so again, you'll see Sikorsky listed there as part of Lockheed Martin uh, because that's who owns them. Uh, these are all Navy contracts, no surprise. And then you see a list of the subcontractor uh, listed there, which Albany shows up uh, twice. Spirit Aerosystems also showing up twice. Um, and the dollars are listed kind of low to high. So um, Spirit there obviously is, um, uh, they're, they're kind of go-to for subcontracting. We look at the uh, GWAX, the government-wide acquisition contracts, uh, none reported. So we just ask that you hop over to the Lockheed uh, Martin page to look at any contract vehicles that they hold. <laughs> okay, again, we mentioned if a company has to subcontract, the threshold is $750,000. So contracts that companies win that have a dollar amount of 750 and above, if you're a large business, then require that you subcontract part of that work out. And uh, here's the list of those top uh, contracts, starting with dollars, uh, high dollars to low dollars. There's obviously plenty more than this, uh, but what is interesting if uh, anyone's been uh, on the series with us this year so far, uh, one of my favorite columns here is the number of transactions. And for the previous contractors that we've looked at the last 21 or 22, however many it's been, usually the number of transactions, you see a couple of uh, low numbers in there, you know, three, four, five. Um, but most of these contracts are broken down uh, more than that. So um, basically this is just uh, indicative of the industry that we're dealing with, obviously. Uh, these large uh, aircraft have um, expensive, big, large, expensive parts. So there's not a lot to uh, to break down when it comes to the subcontracting component of it. Uh, if you want more details, obviously you would take the contract number, copy and paste that over into sam.gov to, to really find out what's happening. Some conclusions I found uh, a little bit of information here uh, to be fairly interesting. And again, this can certainly help you in your um, in your path to work with these large businesses is just, you know, do some due diligence, take some time to educate yourself about the company, um, the, uh, and just the backgrounds so that you have some talking points that show that you are in fact truly interested uh, in working with them. So the company was started uh, by Igor Sikorsky. He was born in Russia a long time ago. Um, he was influenced, he read a lot of books about Leonardo da Vinci, and he went on a couple trips with his father to Germany, um, where he was then, um, I think was reading some books that his father gave him about the Wright brothers. Um, he started a production business uh, right around World War I, and then the, the Bolshevik uh, Revolution then forced him to move in 1918 over to France, and then eventually, um, once the war ended, he moved to the USA uh, in the New England Corridor. Um, this guy crashed and burned a lot, meaning that, uh, and pun intended, uh, he attempted many times to uh, design helicopters. He was, in fact, in one of the helicopters that um, crashed uh, into a creek. Um, I think he was somewhat injured, but obviously made it out and just basically got back up and, um, and kept designing helicopters. Um, over the years, he's lectured at uh, Rhode Island and then Bridgeport in Connecticut. Uh, he started then the manufacturing company in 1923, uh, which was backed by some of the Russian military, meaning monetarily backed. Uh, and for any classical musical fans that are out there, one of my favorites, uh, musical composer uh, Rachmaninoff, uh, invested, I think it was about, um, I would say, $5,000 uh, into the company as well. So uh, just some, some interesting notes in case you're watching Jeopardy or... Uh, or need some talking points next time you're at the, the symphony. Um, 
he then became a US citizen, moved to Connecticut, and then his company became part of, um, and we're just kind of um, consolidating some information to make this uh, kind of short and sweet here, but the company then rolled up to United Technologies. Uh, Pan Am obviously then um, took on his, we'll call these flying boats, the S-42 for their transatlantic flight, uh, which they're obviously known for. Uh, Vought Aircraft, which still exists today, uh, was merged into, uh, or they were merged into Vought Aircraft. Um, but Sikorsky is certainly known for their Black Hawks and the Seahawks. Uh, they've also got the uh, presidential helicopter under production, uh, which is now the VH-3 and the VH-60. Uh, they were then purchased by Lockheed uh, for $9 billion, not too, too long ago, but um, uh, they've been under uh, Lockheed for a while. Uh, all of the model numbers begin uh, with an S that, you'll, um, that you should be aware of, especially if you're trying to, uh, to sell into Sikorsky. Um, and then his later models uh, as listed here are uh, kind of the UH, the SH, and the MH. Okay, these are some headlines that we uh, we pulled up in the last uh, I don't know, 24, 48, 72 hours uh, just to kind of find out what's happening in their business. So if in fact you are interested in doing business with Sikorsky, you should be signed up for the Google Alerts and you should know this information uh, better than we do. Um, so it looks like they've got some success with the Army. Um, they're working on a, um, a flying wing drone program for the Pentagon. And, um, and doing some work over in the Falklands. I think we've got another page here too. Um, the big Paris uh, air show that happens every year um, in June. Uh, they were celebrating their 100 uh, year anniversary. I'm not sure perhaps some of the folks on the line have, uh, have attended that or were over there uh, in Paris for that event this year. Um, uh, Norway is kind of stepping in and, and purchasing some helicopters. So that'll add some uh, some money to the balance sheet, and uh, they obviously sell to foreign countries, not just the U.S. Uh, they did lose the deal here on an Army helicopter uh, purchase. So this is when um, congressional um, individuals will, you know, get in and, and fight uh, for companies that are headquartered in their uh, district. Um, so Senator Blumenthal uh, from Connecticut, which is where Sikorsky Aircraft uh, has most of their facilities, uh, was obviously fighting for his uh, constituents because it's going to take tax revenue away from uh, from Connecticut. Um, obviously, they were um, challenging the um, the loss there by the Army. The contract went to Bell, which is out of Texas, I believe. And, uh, and again, you should be cognizant of this uh, information, um, cognizant of the stock price, cognizant of who the, the CEO is, uh, know some information about the SBLOs, um, and just, you know, what events are they attending, where are they going to be, what associations are they members of, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, some conclude, concluding remarks more on the contracting side. Obviously, they're very specialized. These are going to be large purchases that don't happen frequently. Uh, DOD is uh, their main target, but obviously they're a little bit diversified and they've got contracts with um, Coast Guard, Army, DLA, uh, and others. Um, the dollars on the DOD side we saw are somewhat declining, but it's still billions of dollars. So uh, there's still plenty of work for the, the subcontractors there. Um, Coast Guard showed some promise. Um, and we'll see what happens with them in uh, fiscal year 2023. We still have a couple months left before we get to the end of September, which is the end of the fiscal year. Uh, if you want to work with Sikorsky, again, you've got to navigate through Lockheed. And we had the, the link earlier in the slides uh, where you would go to do that. Um, again, these are large contracts that are not uh, going to be broken into, you know, crumbs. These are, you know, large contracts where, you know, a chunk here, a chunk there. Um, so competitive and very, very specialized uh, is really the, uh, the name of the game here with Sikorsky. We want to thank everybody for participating. Again, the webinar is recorded. You can grab it on YouTube later today. Uh, SlideShare, uh, we will update um, the PowerPoint and, uh, and get that uploaded later today as well. These recordings are on our website. Uh, these are the ones that have been completed. So Lockheed Martin is actually where we started. Um, the uh, the series where is kind of where you want to go obviously for uh, more information on um, Sikorsky and how to work with them 
uh, Raytheon was one of the subcontractors. That was the second um, webinar that we did. You can obviously find those recordings. Next week, we're covering ADS Tactical. That should be an interesting one. Uh, we'll then continue every single Wednesday at 12 o'clock through November 15th, where we'll wrap up with GlaxoSmithKline. Don't forget, uh, Monday next week, we still, like I said, uh, have a couple tickets left. Uh, two hours of networking, 300 people. These government agencies and these fine sponsors will be there. You can sign up on our website under the event section. Just scroll down to July 17th, which is Monday's date. Buy your ticket there. And uh, thanks again for participating. We hope to see everybody next week.